So with Liverpool away and Brighton away as the next two matches, is Nuno going to have to start spicing it up tactically or not? Welcome to Nuno's Dilemma. Good morning, good evening or good night. Hope you guys are doing well and welcome to this slight different vibe because I'll be honest with you, I'm sick and tired of this international break. Honestly, just get on with the football. If you're enjoying the content or you want the Premier League back, let me know by hitting that like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new and there's literally about 15 to 20 tickets left on this football prizes giveaway. If you want to win this away kit or insta win the Forest home kit, get your tickets in now by scanning the QR code or clicking on the link down below and that will take you to football prizes. Okay, so let's get into this video because I have a lot of time to think, man. There's like nothing else to do at the moment. It just feels like the world has stopped. And I've started to look ahead to the games we have coming up, in specific, the Liverpool and the Brighton game. Now, you can say that these are probably two of the most informed teams currently, including ourselves, I'll put ourselves in there. So this is gonna be a real good test for Nuno. And what I wanna talk about today is, do we need to spice up the tactics? And does this cause Nuno a huge, huge dilemma? So let's get over to the team squad sheet and I'll explain exactly what I mean. All right, so let's have a look at what's going on with Nuno and his tactics currently. And we're seeing the 4-2-3-1 being implemented as his mainstay, which I just said I really love. However, looking ahead to these couple of games we've got going on, but in specific with Liverpool, where they have a dominant midfield, I do worry that Forrest could get swarmed in this midfield, lose the midfield battle, and Liverpool being in form, it could spell trouble for us. So I think maybe Nuna has to look at slightly adapting in some of these games. Now, we've seen him implement the back five formation, which I don't necessarily like, unless you're looking at Murillo stepping out into the midfield or something like that, and then dropping in um, into the three. But what I want to talk about is a couple of the variations that he should try in the four back dial. Now, it's going to cause him some headaches in midfield. And the first one I want to show you would be to go to a 4-3-3. So in essence, what you're going to do is you're going to drop the 10 into that position. It's only slightly different to the 4-2-3-1, but it does make a huge difference. And this is where dilemma number one for me comes with Nuno. Is who would be the three in that midfield and what shape would he play it? Because you could play this as a six with two attacking eights, for example. So you could go with something like that. Or you could play it with two sixes and an eight sitting there who breaks into the box um, whenever Forrest attack. Now, for me, the headache on this one is Morgan Gibbs White. It does cause him a bit of a dilemma. Because if you wanted to go a midfield three, I think it would offer Sangare a lot more support. And I wouldn't want to do it, but if Morgan Gibbs-White was to come out and you bring in a Dominguez, who can play either alongside Sangare or alongside Anderson in the eight, it's a bit more dynamic. Now, yes, you do lose a lot of your creativity and your attacking elements, but what you gain back is that solidity in the midfield, which allows you to compete with the Liverpool midfield as well. Now, Liverpool play with a 4-3-3 as well. So I think it would be wise to put an extra midfielder in there. Now, you could actually keep Morgan gibbs White in there because I think he plays quite well as a number eight. And as long as you were telling him to do his work, you know, within that midfield area, I, I actually say some of his best performances have been in that position. What I wouldn't do, and we saw this happen under Cooper, was potentially to drop one of the wingers and then look to play Morgan Gibbs White out wide and then bringing in someone like a, let's say, a Ward Prowse. That for me doesn't work. I like Morgan Gibbs White centrally. For me, he has to be either the 8 or the 10. Now, there is a way that Nuno could accommodate Morgan Gibbs White into his natural position and allow for him to play in the 10 while still protecting the midfield. And to be honest, looking ahead to the Liverpool match, I maybe, maybe would be tempted by this coming formation. And that's the 4-3-1-2. 
Now, what that would mean, again, causing Nuno more headaches and dilemmas, is you're going to have to drop your wide players. So you're going to have to take Callum Hudson-Odoi out, and you're going to have to take Elanga out as well. And what you could do is almost set up a three there with Anderson. Let's just put Ward um, Sangare in the middle, and then Ward Prowse on the right. You put Morgan Gibbs-White there, and then potentially you're bringing in a secondary striker, or you could bring like a, a Jota, which I think would work. Why? Because Jutta can play as a false nine down the middle or he can drift out to the right hand side and help create the width. Now what you're then depending on is your fullbacks to create that width. And I think if we're going to do that, it would have to be with um, Williams being dropped for me, putting Einar on the right hand side and then bringing Alex Moreno in on the left. Now I expect Alex Moreno to start coming in as that left sided, uh, as the left back going forward. But what this will allow is Moreno and Einar to make those overlapping runs. Sangare can potentially drop in to turn it into a back three. And then you'd have Anderson and Ward-Prowse in the middle. And Jutta, you could float him out towards the right-hand side and even on the left-hand side. So this in itself could create a, a good block down the middle, forcing Liverpool to play out wide. It's a bit like what Cooper did against Man City in a slightly different variation, but he made sure that he blocked out the middle of the park, which forced Man City out wide, which limited the creativity they could have in the middle of our box and in the middle of the park. So I'd be tempted by this. Now, you could have an argument, okay, if we're going to do that, cause Liverpool some headaches by chucking Taiwo on as well. Now, Taiwo is far from fit right now, far from match sharp, and more importantly, lacking in confidence. Now, I think that would be too risky, but it would cause Liverpool some headaches in terms of having to keep Virgil van Dijk um, occupied, Kanate, if they're going with those two. We saw what Taiwo did against them at the city ground when we beat them 1-0. He occupied them physically and caused them no ends of headache. So I think there is an argument for that. But I still think the Jutta option would be a lot better. And what this formation would allow Nuno to do is flood that midfield with three. Let Morgan Gibbs-White play in his correct position. But we risk losing out on the width. Especially with the likes of Salah, with the likes of Diaz as well. Trent overlapping, Robertson on the other side as well. It could be a risky strategy. But it's definitely one I think he should consider. Now, if we just have a quick look at the three-back formation that I think potentially Nuno may consider, it would look something like this, in my opinion. You'd have Moreno and Einar pushing up to create almost a five-man midfield and bringing Maratta, Murillo and Milenkovic into the back three. Now, Milenkovic plays this internationally. Maratta's a left-sided centre-back as well. And then Murillo could be that one who creates the sixth man, in my opinion, into midfield. You could also switch Milenkovic into the middle, but then the other two centre-backs are more left-sided for me. They can play central and left, but not so much on the right-hand side. So I'm not against this one either. It just looks really packed out and really congested. It's a bit kind of coopable settings on it. But what, again, it gives you is that brickness through the middle. And options of allowing... Um, Einar and Moreno to get further forward with a little more license to be a little more risky because knowing you've got three centre-backs and Sangare who can drop in to make it a four. Now, if you wanted to um, say the downsides to this, it would be, of course, that Nuna has the dilemma of having to drop Callum Hudson-Odoi, Elanga, Jota and Sosa. And yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a manager who loves, he loves to play with wingers and then use that of centre forward to be able to link in the wingers players as we've showed you before in in the tactical videos we do on Nuno so this one for me is an option but it's not one I think Nuno would go with this next formation if he's gonna go to a back three I think would be the one he chooses Okay, so this is the 3-4-3, three, three. and the reason I think Nuno would lean towards this formation is because this is one he's used historically. It's actually the main one he used at Wolves. And what this formation allows is the doubling up in the width. So you'd have Moreno and Hudson-Odoi on one side, Einar and Jota or Alango, whoever he chooses, on the other side. But again, the dilemma here is Morgan Gibbs-White. Because you're going to a two-man midfield technically, unless you're allowing one of your centre-backs to 
step up to make it a three. And if you're doing that, how does Morgan Gibbs White fit in? And this is why I just don't know which way he's going to swing when it comes to these next couple of away matches. Will he put Morgan Gibbs White out on the wing? Would he drop Anderson and play Morgan Gibbs White at the eight? Or would he consider dropping Morgan Gibbs White full stop? These are the headaches that he's going to have to have. And this is why maybe, although he loves this formation, he can't implement it at Forest because we need a number 10 with Morgan Gibbs White being our main man. So this is why I think we haven't seen it in general going for um, in the past, sorry. And this is why the 4-2-3-1 has been his favoured one to accommodate for Morgan Gibbs White's strengths and what he can do on the pitch. But outside of these, these would be the formations that I think we will see or be considered by Nuno over the next few matches. Because I do think he needs to spice it up. We've had our quote-unquote easy three matches um, to start with. We're undefeated. Now I feel that the real test is about to begin as we go back-to-back -back away matches with Liverpool and Brighton. So that's the dilemma he has. And really, it does center around Morgan Gibbs-White. Can he accommodate formations to suit Morgan Gibbs-White? Can Morgan Gibbs-White adapt to play in the eight? Or, if needs be, back out on the right, which I don't recommend. Or, would he be forced to drop him to suit the betterment of the team? What do you guys think? There's a lot, a lot to unpack there, and I can't wait to see your comments. If you enjoyed the content, please don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. And roll on the Premier League, man. I'm done with this international break. Come on, you Reds.